Hi, my name is Felipe, and today in this video I will be talking about transmission systems. In telecommunications, a transmission system is a medium that transmits a signal from one place to another. The signal can be an electrical, optical, or a radio signal. The selection of the most effective transmission system for a given application must be made in terms of key design considerations, such as transmission characteristics, propagation delay, security, physical dimensions, and cost. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about all these features regarding wired and wireless transmission media. Wired transmission systems may use copper cable, twisted pair cables, coaxial cable, or fiber optics. The most common wireless transmission systems are microwave and satellite radio to interconnect far-end and near-end equipment. So let's begin with copper cables. Copper cable is the oldest, cheapest, and most common transmission medium. Its main disadvantages are high attenuation and sensibility to electrical interference. Attenuation in copper cable increases with frequency approximately according to the following formula. The attenuation, ADV, in decibels, is equal to k times the square root of the frequency, where k is a constant specific for each cable. Electromagnetic signals tend to weaken over a distance. This is particularly true for copper cables due to the tendency of the signal to radiate from the wire, resulting in a higher error performance and poor security. In terms of dimensions, copper wires are available in different sizes. However, it is worthy to say that the bigger and heavier the cable, the shorter the length of cable a construction crew can put on a truck and pull through a conduit or hang from a pole. Propagation delay refers to the length of time required for a signal to travel from transmitter to receiver across a transmission system. Factors impacting propagation delay include the distance between transmitter and receiver and the density of the medium. An electrical signal propagates more slowly as it travels through a copper wire. Given the general info about copper cables, I will proceed with two subtypes of this kind of transmission systems. Twisted pair cables and coaxial cables. Twisted pair consists of two insulated copper wires that are actually typically 0.4 to 0.6 mm thick, or about 1 mm thick if insulation is included. These two wires are twisted together to reduce external electrical interference and also interference from one pair to another in the same cable. This improves security. The twisted pair is symmetrical, and the difference in voltage between these two wires contains the transmitted signal. Twisted pair is easy to install requires little space and does not cost a lot. Twisted pair are used in the telecommunication networks like subscriber lines to megabits per second digital transmissions with distances up to 2 kilometers between repeaters, in DSLs up to several megabits per second and in short whole data transmissions up to 100 megabits per second in local area networks. In a coaxial cable, stiff copper wire makes up the core, which is surrounded by insulating material. The insulator is encased by a cylindrical conductor. This outer conductor is covered in protective plastic sheath. The construction of the coaxial cable gives a good combination of high bandwidth and excellent noise immunity. Coaxial cables are used in local area networks, in antenna systems for broadcast radio and TV, and in high analog and digital transmission systems in telecommunication networks, and even in all generation submarine systems. Optical fiber is the most modern of the transmission media. It offers a wide bandwidth, low attenuation, and extremely high immunity to external electrical interference. Fiber optic links are used as the major media for long-distance transmission in all developed countries, and high-capacity coaxial cable systems are gradually being replaced by fiber systems. An optical fiber has a central core with a diameter around 8 or 60 microns of very pure glass surrounded by an outer layer of less dense glass. A light ray is refracted from the surface between these materials back to the core and it propagates in the core form end to end. The principle of optical cable transmission is presented in this slide. You may want to compare the dimensions of optical fiber with the diameter of a human hair that is approximately 100 microns. The principle of optical fiber transmission has been known for some decades. The breakthrough of optical fiber technology has been expected to occur ever since the first half of the 1970s. However, the development of fiber manufacturing technology and optical component technology was slower than expected, and the commercial breakthrough was delayed until the mid-80s. Since that time, all new high-capacity and long-distance cable systems, including submarine systems, have used optical fibers as a transmission medium. 
The advantages of optical fibers include high transmission capacity. Optical fibers have a very large bandwidth and they are able to carry very high date rates, up to 50 gigabits per second. Low cost. The cost of the fiber has decreased to the level of a twisted pair cable. However, the coating and shielding of the cable may increase the cost by a factor of two or more. Tolerance against external interference. Electromagnetic disturbances have no influence on the light signal inside the fiber. Small size and low weight. Fiber material weighs little and the fiber diameter is only of the order of a hundred microns instead of a millimeter or more for copper wire. Unlimited material resource. Quartz, used in glass fibers, is one of the most common materials on Earth. Low attenuation. Attenuation in modern fiber is less than half of a decibel per kilometer and is independent of their date rate. One disadvantage of optical fibers is that they are more difficult to install than copper cables. Installation and maintenance of a broken fiber require special equipment and well-trained personnel. Another disadvantage is that the radiation of light from a broken fiber may cause damage to the human eye. Your data is safe with fiber cable. It doesn't radiate sig signals and is extremely difficult to tap. If the cable is tapped, it's very easy to monitor because the cable leaks light, causing the entire system to, fo to fail. If an attempt is made to break the physical security of your fiber system, you'll know it. Optical cables transfer data at the speed of light in glass so its propagation delay is ideally neglected. Now let's talk about wireless transmission medium. The most important advantage of microwave radio transmission over cable transmission is that it does not require a physical medium. The systems are quick to install and because no digging of cable into the ground is required, the investment costs are much lower. An electromagnetic signal travels at a slower rate through the atmosphere of Earth oxygen, carbon dioxide, water molecules, smoke, dust, and other physical matter are present, acting together to increase the density of the medium and impede the progress of the signal. Taking this into account, since microwaves are used for a long-distance communication, its propagation delay may be significant. Generally speaking, and assuming that a microwave system is designed properly, microwave performs on a par with copper wire networks in terms of error performance. One important factor that restricts the use of radio transmission is a shortage of frequency bands. That is traduced in a lower bandwidth. The most suitable frequencies are already occupied, and there are many systems with a growing demand for wider frequency bands. Examples of other systems using radio waves are public cellular systems, professional mobile radio systems, cordless telephones, broadcast radio and TV, satellite communications, and wireless local area networks. When a message is transmitted by radio, the originator, the originator may know some of those who are receiving it, but will never know all of those who are receiving the, mes the message. You must assume that an undesired receptor may receive this transmission. Property prepared messages using modern cryptographic systems may prevent an enemy from understanding a message. However, they can still learn a lot. In satellite communications, a microwave repeater is located in a satellite. An Earth station transmits to the satellite at one frequency band, and the satellite regenerates and transmits the signal back to another frequency band. The frequencies allocated by ITU communications are in the frequency range of 1 to 30 GHz. The satellites using telecommunication networks are usually located in a so-called geostationary orbit, so that they seem to be in the same location all the time from the point of view of the Earth station. The distance of this orbit is around 36,000 kilometers from the equator on the Earth's surface, and this introduces a long transmission delay that is approximately 250 milliseconds from the transmitting air station to the receiving air station. The speaker has to wait for a response for more than half a second, and this disturbs an interactive communication. However, satellite systems can provide telephone services to areas where no terrestrial infrastructure for telecommunications exists. All the necessary equipment increases the cost of this kind of transmission. One major application for satellite communication has been broadcast satellite TV. A TV program from a single satellite may be received in any part of a continent simultaneously, making distribution costs per customer low. Satellite systems may also provide an attractive solution for data communications, for example, for a global hotel chain that needs a global data service to keep reservation databases synchronized. Microwave and satellite systems are inherently insecure, as access to the signal is easily accomplished and virtually detectable through an antenna properly tuned in proximity to the signal path. 
Also note that digital systems offer much greater security potential than analog systems by virtue of the fact that application softwares can quite effectively encrypt or encode the data to conceal its true meaning. Satellite transmission is susceptible to environmental interference, particularly at frequencies above 20 GHz. Sunspots and other types of electromagnetic interference can have considerable, considerable impact on microwave transmission in general and satellite transmission in particular. Error performance is also sensitive to the proximity of the Earth station to the equator, as those nearest to poles and farthest from the equator must deal with more signal absorption and environmental interference, as the signal must travel diagonally through more atmosphere. Error performance also is sensitive to the physical location of the receiving antenna within the footprint, as the signal is strongest in the center of the footprint and weakest at the edges. As a result of these several factors, satellite transmission requires rather extensive error detection and correction capabilities. To conclude, this, to conclude this, one can say that the usage of a specific transmission medium depends on the desired application. In wired systems, optical fiber is desirable in most, mostly all applications due to its bandwidth, distance, error performance, and security. In the case of long-distance transmission, both radio and satellite communications are the chosen transmission medium. I think that this is everything I wanted to say concerning transmission media in telecommunications. And well, thank you for watching.